Hi there, this is Ian with MakeUseOf.com and today we will be looking at how you can send emails from an Excel spreadsheet using Visual Basic scripts. Now this is based on an article on the Make Use of website by Ryan Doob. Uh, you don't really need any coding skills in order to do this. Uh, I'll be giving you all of the code and showing you how to use it. However, learning any code is always a good thing. But for now, open up a new spreadsheet and let's get started. The first thing you need to do is open the developer console in Excel. Now you won't have this as standard, so you need to head to options and look under customize ribbon. Here, there will be an option to turn on the developer ribbon. And when you press okay, you'll notice at the top of the screen between view and help, there is a new uh, menu called developer. Now we need to add a button for our macro. So go to the developer console and under insert, make a new active X controls button. Drag it anywhere you'd like on the screen to create the button. And this is the button that we will use to trigger our email script. You need to make a macro, so click on macros and give it a name. I'm gonna call this one send email and click create, which will open up the VBA window. We need to add the CDO library in order to send emails. So under tools, click references and look for the Windows 2000 library for Microsoft CDO, which is listed as Microsoft CDO for Windows 2000, which shows how old it is. Um, we'll be using this today, so uh, select it and press OK to add it to the project. So this is the script we'll be using to send mail. Now, it does seem pretty long, and if you're not used to coding, pretty scary, but don't worry, um, I'll be showing you which bits you need to use, and always the code will be linked under the video and is available in the article. But the parts that you need to change are noted in green here. You need to add your email address that you want to send it from here. So in this case, I'm setting it up for Jimmy Biscuits. Um, the address you want to send it to, I'm going to make sure that Jimmy Biscuits is emailing me at my make use of address. And underneath where it says string body, uh, this is where you want to send your information from. So where it says the total results for this quarter are, that's just what's going to be in the body of the email. And then after that, where it says uh, STR and then in brackets sheet one cells two two, that's just saying send a string of whatever is in that area. So in sheet one cells two two. It's worth noting that in this case, 2-2 two, two, uh, is the way that VBA finds columns, which is a little bit difficult to understand because in Excel, it would be B2. Uh, another example, 3-6 would be C6. Uh, once you sort of think of it that way, it's fairly simple, but at first it's not that intuitive. Now we need to set up the SMTP configuration. Uh, now, this is the part where it could really vary for you. Uh, if you've got a Gmail account, it is smtp.gmail.com. This will vary depending on your provider. Um, you will also need to enter your email address and your password, and you will require your port number. Now, for Gmail, the secure port number is 465. Um, and uh, all of the other values here I would suggest leaving alone. Despite the fact we're using a secure port, uh, this isn't actually going to work as it stands, and that's because Google changed the way that they did things a little while ago. So what we're going to have to do next is change the privacy settings in our Google account. For a few years, Google have been blocking certain apps as a security measure. So to get this working, we're going to have to change that. Head to your Google account and head to the security panel. Underneath here, you will find an area called Less Secure App Access. You'll need to turn this on to proceed with the tutorial. Of course, Google recommends not to do this for security reasons, and you do this at your own risk. In this particular case, using the CDO from VBA is something I'm fairly happy with using, and also this is a joke email address that I'm not so worried about ruining. So now we are almost ready to go. All we need to do is link this code to the button on our sheet. So on the left panel, if you double click Sheet 1, it will open up a script for the sheet. And uh, in the top drop down here where it says command button one, um, it'll probably say general when you first open it, change that to command button one, and it'll automatically put a click in your script. You can see here, private sub command button one, click. We're gonna write send email in there. And now whenever our button is clicked, it will call the send email function. And now we can test it. So save your file, click the button and check your emails. And lo and behold, there it is. We have an email with the correct timestamp and the correct data. It's working. So what we're gonna do now is change it so that you don't have to use the button at all. Just before we move on, a quick disclaimer. You may not have the same results as I did. I was using the Google 
SMTP server with the specific settings that I have found work in the article, that's also the same thing that Ryan did, you might have a different thing with your email. You need to check with your email provider how to use your SMTP server. Um, it's quite similar to setting up something like Outlook or Thunderbird, so maybe start there if you're having trouble. Now we have a button that will send us a value every time we click it, and that's great. But let's automate this process. Let's make it so that every time the spreadsheet is opened or saved or closed, we get an email with the relevant value. This could be useful if you're sharing the spreadsheet with someone else using a shared computer, want to keep track of something. The way we do this is by modifying our code. Instead of sending an email whenever the button is clicked on sheet one, we're going to use this same idea to affect the entire workbook. So double click on this workbook in the left panel, and in the drop down menu, select workbook. This will automatically give you an open method, which every time the uh, workbook is opened, it will call. So we're just gonna copy our send email call into that. Now, every time the Excel spreadsheet opens up, it will send an email with the relevant value and of course, a timestamp of when it was sent. So, uh, adding the other things is also quite simple. So after the document is saved, after save, we also want to send an email. So let's put a send email call in there. And as I mentioned, we also want to know whenever this document is closed, what the value is. So before the document is closed, we'll also send an email. Now that we're set up, we can test it. So I'm going to change this value just to prove that it's working and I'm going to save the document. And as you can see, we got an email with the correct value timestamped when we saved the document. Great, it's working. So far, we've automated several things within this spreadsheet, but what if the spreadsheet isn't open? If you wanted a daily report at the same time each day, you would need this spreadsheet to be open in order for it to work. Well, as long as the computer is on, the Windows Task Scheduler can help you. You can open it from the Start menu by typing Task Scheduler, and this is what takes care of a lot of things behind the scenes. Click on Action and click Create Basic Task to make your own task. You'll want to create a name and a description for your task and click Next. You want this task to trigger daily, so click daily and choose the time you want it to trigger. I'm going to choose a time quite soon in the future just so that I can test it. The action is we want it to start a program, Excel, and the program we want it to start is Excel. So I'm going to quickly browse and choose my Excel shortcut, which is in the Windows Start menu. Under Arguments, you want the path to your Excel spreadsheet. So that would be, uh, in this case, it's C users, my username, documents, and then the folder I have it in, along with the file with the file extension of your Excel spreadsheet. Once you've done that, click Next, and you'll get a nice little uh, summary of what it's going to be. And when you click Finish, that task will be added to the task list. Now we get to test three things in one go. Uh, we need to close this Excel document because we need it to automatically open again in four minutes with the task scheduler. However, we set it up so that it would send us an email whenever the document closes and whenever it will save. So now let's close the document. Like any good document, when I try and close it, it'll ask me if I want to save it. So I click save. So that is a after save and a before closed should have triggered. And as you can see, I have two emails with the same timestamp, meaning that the saving and the closing triggers are working. All we need to do now is wait a few minutes and see if the task scheduler will work. It's a few minutes later and you can see that Excel is open. The scheduler opened Excel automatically and our test sheet is also open. Now the scheduler won't show that this task run because it isn't storing a history for the task, but we can prove it worked by once more checking our emails. And there it is. Excel wasn't open, now it is, and our script ran. A quick note in case you're having trouble making this work. You may need to change the security of your macros. So under the developer tab, click macro security, and you might need to enable all macros. Now, as it says here, it is not recommended. You can potentially let dangerous code run on your computer. And I didn't need to do this. It worked perfectly fine. But while researching the topic, I found a few people had this problem, and this is how you can fix it. So this is how you automate Excel to send emails for you with data from your own spreadsheets. We highlighted a couple of ways that this can work today. However, there are many, many more. If you look in Visual Basic, uh, where we were working before, under the right column here, uh, under Workbook, you'll see there is a blistering array of things that you can do with your workbook. Um, and uh, as I mentioned before, this video was actually from an article on the Make User website by Ryan Doob. That will be linked in the description, along with a link to all the code we used today. 
Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to make use of, as well as tips, tricks and tutorials, we have weekly tech reviews and giveaways. Have a great day folks, see you next time.